Hello guys and welcome to part 5 of this spy game tutorial where we're making uh, a sliding puzzle. Uh, okay, so in the last part we created the buttons which we can click on them and they work and we still have the puzzle working here. So today we're going to implement the shuffle function. So whenever we press the button shuffle, it will shuffle for us and then we start the timer automatically and then we can start playing so for this shuffle i'm doing a different approach to this because first i've done it the shuffling to just literally randomize this grid but sometimes you can get a unsolvable puzzle and that's not very nice <laughs> so i have implemented another approach to it which is we're gonna have a function called shuffle and every time it runs that function it's gonna loop through all the grids and it's gonna check for the empty tile so if it's an empty tile then we're gonna check for left down right and up and if we have any of this inside of the grid so we're always gonna have at least Two of those is always going to be inside, even if the empty space is on the corner here. We're going to still have two of those that it's inside of the grid. We're going to pick one of them at random and we're going to move it. And then we're going to do this again. So we're going to check the empty, style, the empty tile. We're going to check all uh, right, left, up and down. And we're going to pick one of these three in this case, which is inside of the grid. We're going to pick one of these three at random and we're going to move it. And then we do it again and then again so that's how it's going to work the shuffle so it's literally it's going to be randomizing moving the tiles around that way when it's shuffled we we'll still have a solvable puzzle every time so to do that we're going to come in here i'm just going to create after this create game we're going to define a function called shuffle uh whoops we don't need any parameters in there and then in here we're going to create a variable called possible moves which is going to be an empty list okay so we're going to check for all of them and we're going to do a for loop enumerated so it's the same as we did it down here for the events Okay, so you can actually just copy this one if you want. So we're just going to do the same uh, for loops that we used in there. So for row and tiles, so taking the index and the actual element in enu enumerate self dot tiles. So we're going to be checking this list here, which contain the objects of tiles. And then for column and tile in enumerate tiles okay so we're just going to be checking every single tile on that list and if the tile.text is equals to empty that means we are on an empty tile and now we're going to have to check for the right left up and down and if we have those in the grid then we're just going to append that to these possible moves. So we're going to use those functions that we created before as well. So tile right. So if that's true, oops, I forgot the if in here. So if tiles right, then we do possible moves dot append. And we're just going to append this string right in there. Okay. And then we do the same thing. It's very important here to not use elif. So we check all of them, okay, because there's possible there's more than one possible moves. Okay, so we do left and we do possible moves dot append left. And then we do tile up and possible moves dot append up. And the last one if tile dots down possible move dot append down 
Okay, so this way, when we loop through it, we find the empty tile, we check the right, the left, up and down, and we're gonna append one of this or more of this to this possible moves. It's gonna be at least two, even if the empty tiles on the corner, we still have up and right. So it's gonna be at least two in there. And after all of this, we will just break because if we found the empty tile, we don't need to check all the other tiles. It's the only one empty tile in the list anyway. And then we're gonna come into this part here. So we are breaking out of this loop here. Okay, and then in here, we're just gonna check for the possible moves. If the length of the possible move is, is more than zero, that means we append at least two of those. Then we just break out of this loop here. So we don't have to go through all the other loops, all the other lists, basically. Okay, that's the first part of it. The next part here is gonna be to import random, actually. I uh, already imported in here, so we already have the random module in there. Now we're gonna do a self.choice. This one doesn't really need to be uh, self, I don't think so. So just choice equals random dot choice and we can pass a list inside. So random dot choice will pick a element inside of a list. So this list here has a list two elements, is either right, left, up or down. And this one, we're just gonna pick one of them. And then we can check in here if choice is equals to right. We are going to do the same thing we did it in here. Okay, so we're just gonna swap the the tiles. Okay, so we're gonna swap the empty with the number and the number with the empty. So you can each just copy that and paste it in here. And again, we're gonna do a elif choice equals left. Okay, I'll just copy this one. And we can just paste it in here. Next is gonna be early if choice equals up. And then we have early if choice equals down. Let's just copy this one. Copy up. Put it there and then down. And we put it, whoops, what's happening? Down. And uh, there's only one more problem in here. There is a very slight chance, I know that this is random, but it could happen that, for example, if the empty is here and we choose up, it will move this too, right? And then the next time the empty is here, we can choose down again, and it's just gonna move back up. And then if we're here and then we choose up, so there is a slight chance that the shuffle will just do this and it's not gonna shuffle anything, right? So I want to make it a bit more random in here. So if we are here and then we choose up, we move this. And now the next time we iterate through it, we cannot choose down. So if the previous move was up, then we cannot choose down. So we can only choose this two here and it's gonna move like this. So if I'm here and I the previous move was to the to the right or to the left in this case, we cannot choose the one on the right. So we have to choose one of these three. Okay, so we have a bit more a shuffle feel to it. Otherwise the, the program can just do this for a couple of times and say it's shuffled and it's not really. <laughs> So to do that, we're going to initialize a variable in here that's gonna be called previous previous choice. And we're just gonna initialize that as an empty string because the first time we go through it, it doesn't really matter which one we choose it. 
and we're just going to change this one a little bit let me just remove this empty spaces in here and just after the break in here before the choice before we choose this we have to check if the previous choice was right so if that previous choice was right then we need to take the possible moves and remove the left from it okay so if we if the previous choice was right if we move to the right then we cannot pick the one on the left on the opposite side of it otherwise we're just going to be doing moving back and forth and we're going to remove left only if left is in the list okay if not then we're just going to return the possible moves and nothing's going to happen okay so if the right is not if the left is not in the list then we just return this and then elif self dot previous choice is equals to left then can you guess it we're going to remove the right from the list only if the right is in the list okay else we do nothing and again we do for previous choice equals up and we remove down if down is in the list okay and then the last one is self the previous choice equals down and remove up if up in possible moves else possible moves okay so we first we check all of this because we need to see it which one was the previous one and then we remove from the list and then we do the random choice okay so at maybe at some point this will have only one possible move in there and it will just choose that one and also after choosing it we have to set the previous the previous choice to this choice okay so we do all of this and then we do the next choice and then we set the previous choice to this and then we check all of this to see which choice was it and change now to see this working uh, let's try to put to call this function in here let me see what's this gonna do um, so we're gonna do if because that's what we did in here right if we press this, sh this shuffle button we change the start shuffle to true so if self dot start shuffle then we do this just for now for testing so if I press shuffle nothing happens that's because we have to also draw the tiles in here so we only drawing the tiles if we click on them we're not drawing them in here because otherwise you get like a weird bug you can try it so if we do this then we have to call the draw tiles in here let's see yeah so you see it's shuffling very fast actually <laughs> now we can't really stop this shuffle so let's work on this update function here which will stop the shuffle after a few seconds so let's go back in here and if the self dot start shuffle is true that means we clicked on the button we do a shuffle we draw the tile and then we have to do self dot time plus equals one okay so we have to increase that timer and then we're just going to put in here if the self dot shuffle time is more than a hundred could be a hundred could be more this is just how much time you wanted to be shuffling for 
So we are using 60 frames per second, so this is gonna be a bit less than a second. So you can make it two seconds by 120, I guess. So if that is more than 120, then we're gonna do self dot start shuffle. We're gonna do that false, we're gonna change that to false. And we're going to test this. Let's see, so I press shuffle. After two seconds, it stops shuffling. And as you can see, you can still play the game and win it. And if you press again, then we just shuffle again. Okay, and if you press reset, we didn't see this one before. So if you press reset, it just resets the game. Starts a new game, basically. Okay. So let's start working on uh, on the parts where it's going to check if we win the game or not. Uh, we're going to create another instance variable on top here. Let me see the instance variable that we're going to need. We're going to need a self.start game. So whenever it stops shuffling, this variable is going to change to true. That means the game started and we can start timing it. Okay. And we're going to have self dot start timer as well, which we're going to start at zero and a self dot elapsed elapsed time, which will start at zero. And I think I'm going to stop this part here because it's already 20 minutes in. And I will continue this update function on the next part and hopefully we'll be able to finish on the last part in the part six. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video.